He told me his first day is in time. He said, nothing good happens without discipline. I know that's true, but I don't know anybody that's got more discipline than Jim Jordan. Please welcome my great friend, Jim Jordan. Go chase down their goals and their dreams. That's what this is all 
about them right now. Right now, it is tougher to do that thing somewhere to the left than some people in this country want to take us. So I just came to say thank you for getting in the game. I, I, I learned a long time ago. Good things in life just typically just don't happen. You want to accomplish anything immediately, anything of significance, anything of lasting value, it takes work, it takes effort, it takes sacrifice, and most importantly, it takes a willingness to get off the sidelines and then get in the game and assume the risk associated with getting in the game. You fight for the things you care about, the things that made our country special, you are going to get attacked. I mean, by the press, by no one else, right? I, I tell my colleagues, I tell my buddies in the free caucuses, I tell them, I say, if the press isn't saying something bad about you, you're not doing anything good, you're good, right? That's <laughs> just the way it is. The, um, I love this line, Cal Thomas, uh, maybe you may have seen the same line, right? Cal Taylor and Cal Thomas did get columns in the Price of Great Selfish Man. And he was talking about the way normal folks see things and the way the elite national press, you know, the New York Times, Washington, uh, the Washington Post, and he said, uh, he said, I get up every morning, I read my Bible in the New York Times, so I can see what he signed up to. <laughs> A lot of that. So thank you. Thank you for, for taking the risk, for taking the heat. That's what's at stake. And understand, when I talk about the left today, I think the left has adopted the most extreme positions in American history. Ralph got into this a little bit earlier. Think about just these three statements. They applaud Colin Kaepernick when he disrespects the flag. They embrace Governor Cuomo when he says America was never that great. And they cheer on Maxine Waters when she says, go harass the Trump supporters. That's the left of that. I mean, it's crazy. And, and Ralph's exactly right. They win, they take back the House. This is why it's so important to help David, it's so important to help Steve and Ron. Um, they take back the House and they're going to raise your taxes. They are going to abolish ICE. They're going to continue to socialize the medicine. And they are going to impeach our president. That's what's at stake. So this is important. Um, it's, it's interesting. This happened in Poly The day after Madison Waters first made her comments back in June, the very next day, we got the treatment. Polly and I, um, first time we've ever went to the, to the theater in D.C. And uh, so we were there, we're inside, and there's a big crowd of people who are kind of walking up this, this ramp, and I'm, I'm, I got our tickets out, and I'm just looking for the, you know, I've never been to the theater before, I'm just looking for the lady in the red jacket, right? The lady's going to tell me where to go. Looking for the usher lady. So we're walking in, I got the tickets out, we're kind of moving along, and all of a sudden I hear behind me this voice, Jim Jordan. And just the way they said it, I'm like, oh no, we're getting treatment. I, I didn't even want to look at me. I just started with one of those who kind of put glances. And then she, this lady just ramps it up. She was your evil, shame. She just starts the whole routine. And she started going with her hands up all crazy. And we, now I'm really looking for the lady in the red coat, right? Yeah, I want to know what door we're going to where our seats are at. So we're moving along, and uh, I still don't want to look back because someone's, you know, someone's always got a camera. So I'm just trying to as best as can, and um, she keeps it up, and, and finally Polly just turns around, and she says, please stop. And the lady goes, I can't believe you're married to this man. I, I told Polly after, and she said, I can't believe you believe this guy, I'm stuck with him. But that, that's how ridiculous it's gotten. That's how crazy the level, we would never, we would never do that to anyone else. We just, we just wouldn't operate that way, but that is the left. About this. That kind of behavior, and look at the president's record. Look at what's happened in this country in 20 months under the president's leadership. I would argue, and Ralph was probably his fifth one Yeah, you can clap. Right? I mean, think about it. In 20 months, regulations reduced, taxes lowered, economy growing at 4.2%, lowest unemployment in 20 years, new horses on the court, Kavanaugh on deck, we're out of the Iran deal, the embassy is in fact in Jerusalem, and the hostages are returning to North Korea. That is phenomenal. <laughs> Even from this state, I'm sure many of you had the opportunity to visit with, um, to visit with our president. 
But if you haven't, I, I, I say this all the time, I wish every single American could spend some time with the president. There is, there is a charisma and energy about him. You cannot help but like this guy. You can, you can feel the love he has for our country. I mean, he loves our military, our veterans, our law enforcement, hardworking families like all of you, business. He, he truly does want to make this country great again. He loves what's great about this nation. And I, I like his energy and his charisma. And most of all, I like him. I like that he's willing to fight and go to that town and shake it up. Yeah. <laughs> think about people, if you're, if you're like folks, uh, most folks, if you think about if you think about people who impacted your life in a positive fashion, next to your parents, next to your mom and dad, it was probably the coach or teacher who had a long way. And for me, dad has a huge impact on the life. As well, but for me, it was my high school wrestling coach, um, Ron McConney. He passed away eight years ago, but I think he was the toughest teacher in our school, and I think he was the toughest wrestling coach in the whole state of Ohio. And this is not an exaggeration. Coach McConney talked about discipline every single day in class. He taught chemistry class. Um, I can remember him saying, you know, "Jordan, this is not any old class." This is chemistry class. More importantly, it's my chemistry class. And he would say, you want to do well in this class? It's going to take this with self this You have to read the material the night before. You have to come to class prepared to do the experiments and participate. But it's going to take this one to do well in my chemistry class. And then the rest of the room, oh my goodness. I can still hear it. self is the most important character quality. You need to accomplish anything and be anything. It's going to be, you got to have self I put that guy shut up. Sounds like my dad did it at home while I not get it for my coach. But he had a great definition, and it hangs in, hangs in the wrestling room at our high school. And wrestling is big at our school. It's like this state. Wrestling is big at our My brother's the coach. Uh, they won the state championship the last 18 years in a row. He's been the head coach for 18 years. He took over for Coach McCunn. And in that wrestling room, with all those state championship banners hanging in the Ron McCunn wrestling room, the biggest banner is on the front wall. It says this, discipline. Doing what you don't want to do, when you don't want to do it. On the front. Back in the day, that meant, that meant doing things, that meant doing things, coaches way, when you're gonna do it, your way. Meant doing things the right way when you'd rather do it the easy and convenient way. The biggest thing is in Washington right now is discipline. We always got so so often it's let's just do the convenient thing. Let's just spend more money. Let's not really tackle the issues we told the voters we're going to do. Let's not really build that border security wall like we promised we all were going to. Let's not really. That's the biggest thing is, and your guys aren't the problem. Your guys are there fighting for, for those things. But that quality, doing what we don't want to do when we don't want to do it, is something we as Americans have to have in our have to have in mind, have to put in play if we're trying to fight for the things that matter the most. Because right now, right now, freedom is in fact under attack. This is the freedom code. Freedom is under attack. You can see it. Have you followed what's going on on college campuses? Have you seen this? Have you followed this whole safe space? Have you followed this thing? Safe spaces and free speech zones, right? There's even this thing called bias response teams. These are like tattletales running around campus, and if you say something politically incorrect, you can be reported, it can be on your official record. This is serious. So we've been doing a series of hearings on the uh, on the oversight committee, which I get the privilege to sitting on. Mark Meadows is one of the subcommittees I should get every day. He's joined hearings on the first one. The first one was a year ago we did with uh, uh, was about the Johnson thing and the pastors and pastors being able to preach what they think they're supposed to preach, what the word tells them to preach, what the Bible says, uh, and not be harassed by the IRS, not jeopardize their, their taxes and status. We did a second one on some of these things that happened on campus with, um, we had Ben Chester and Adam Cole, which was great, and Cole was hilarious. In fact, you got nothing better than watch the role as a local state. He was, he was so good. Um, ben Chester was just, he's, you know, one of the sharpest guys there is. Um, but we had a more recent one where we had this in college professors. And, um, 
We went through the hearing and I was happy to be sure. And so I waited at the end and I asked these professors a couple questions. And I went to the first, the first guy and I said, uh, Professor, on a college campus, can a safe space and a free speech zone be at the same location? You got to think about that for a second. Let me think about that. I said, or is it, or is it sort of like a, uh, sort of like a Venn diagram where there's a little bit of overlap? Like, you know, you can have one foot in a safe space, one foot in a free speech zone, but there's, there's a little bit of overlap in the middle. You think how absurd this is getting on our, on our campuses. I mean, where's the free speech zone supposed to be? Not in America. But it happens. So look, this is here. You all know it. And I'm not going to 
Have you ever seen uh, any of you ever seen uh, the movie 1776? It's the musical. If you have you made our kids watch it. There's some language in it, but it's a great show. <laughs> As you would expect, if you haven't seen it, it was made in 1976 in Bicentennial, it's in sixth grade. And uh, we love this short. Like I said, they had our family watch it. But it, it follows those guys in that hot summer in Philadelphia who launched this experiment in liberty we call America, right there in Independence Hall. And the storyline goes through Adams is the driving force in putting together the Declaration, declaring to the world why it was actually appropriate to commit treason. Think about what they did. Laying out the reason why it was appropriate to rebel against the government. And Adams wants to get this thing written, voted on, and he's ready to go. Um, the most compelling scene, I think, is near the, near the end of the movie. Jefferson has written the document, and they're now doing what Congress has did. They're marking it up. They're changing it. They're amending it. They're, they're, they're working on the bill, working on the documents, the declaration. And Adams is impatient. They're having this debate. One member of the Congress stands up and he says, well, we, we may need to change this particular section because when, when King George reads, it's a little strong, he might take offense to this, we may need to tone this down. Adams rolls his eyes. Pretty soon another member stands up and says, yeah, this, this other paragraph, we need to change this as well because when, when Parliament sees this, uh, it, it's, it's a little too hard getting, we need to, we need to change this one as well. Adams rolls his eyes again. Finally, a third member stands up and says, yeah, this particular section has got to go all together. Because this could jeopardize our deep sea fishing rights off the coast of the wing. And finally, Adams he just can't take it anymore. He stands up and says, it's a revolution thing, and we're going to have to offend somebody. <laughs> and the point is, these guys weren't about offending people. We're not about offending people. But think what they put on the line to start this place that we call America greatest country ever. And our challenge, our job, is to defend those principles that made it special in the first place. To defend faith, your ability to practice your faith the way you want to. Family, think about it. What was the first institution the good Lord put together? Was it the church? Was it the state? It was moms and dads and kids. And I would argue the strength of that institution ultimately determines the strength of our entire culture, our entire country.
Chuck Yeager breaking the sound barrier. And then I was like, wow, that I didn't know. That picture I hadn't seen. And I'm like, wow, that is amazing. In 44 years, two guys find this jalopy thing, you know, a few hundred feet, gets a few feet off the ground. 44 years later, 1947, Chuck Yeager breaks the sound barrier. That's amazing. And they put that down, that was literally, that was the end of the tour. And as I'm walking out that door, all of a sudden they hit me. Well, wait a minute. I represent Wapak Kanetta, Ohio. Why in the heck did they stop there? Wapak Kanetta, Ohio is the hometown of Neil Armstrong. And 22 years after Chuck Yeager broke the South Barrier, another great American stepped on the moon. So think about this. Whenever you start doubting if we can still be the greatest country on the planet and lead this world in the right way, think about this fact. 1903, two Americans fly a plane 100 feet. 66 years later, another American steps up. It is the greatest nation in history. That's why you're on the side of it. That's why you're in the arena fighting for that history, that heritage. That's what's at stake every single election fighting for the things that matter. And our charge has never changed. Our charge as Americans has never changed. It comes straight from Scripture. My favorite verse, Paul's the old guy, giving advice to the young guy Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 7. He says what? Fight the good fight, finish the course, keep the faith. And what I love about that verse, I think that verse was written for America. Fight, finish, keep. Not timid words. Not easy words, tough words of action. Fight for the values that matter most. Keep faith with the principle that made us this great. And finish strong. Finish strong as Americans. That's what we need each generation. If we do that, we finish strong. Think about what the next generation gets to enjoy. The same freedoms and liberties we got to enjoy. That's what's at stake. We got 45 days. 45 days to fight for those things. Take the heat that comes from the press. But stay in the game, making a difference for the greatest nation in history. God bless you. Thank you very much.